Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Monday, the 5th of July, 2021, in the 14th week in Ordinary Time, is the Feast of St. Antony Mary Zacharia and St. Elizabeth of Portugal. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, you love each of us individually with a unique and personal love. Touch my life with your saving power, heal and restore me to fullness of life. Help me to give holy of myself in loving service to others. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture, but first an overview. Saint Elizabeth of Portugal was a daughter of King Peter III of Aragon and grandniece of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. Elizabeth went to Portugal as the child bride of King Denis. As queen, Elizabeth was diligent in prayer and almsgiving, yet her thoughts were never far from her own family. Her loving ministration won over her harsh husband and her rebellious son, Alonso. In 1323, she rode on horseback between the advancing armies of husband and son to beg peace averting both civil war and family bloodshed. After Dennis's death, she became a Franciscan tertiary and devoted her life to the poor. Elizabeth, the peacemaker, died in 1336. Jacob had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground and God's messengers were going up and down on it and the Lord was speaking. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 10. Jacob departed from Beersheba and proceeded toward Haran. When he came upon a certain shrine, as the sun was already set, he stopped there for the night. Taking one of the stones of the shrine, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep at that spot. Then he had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground, with its top reaching to the heavens and God's messengers were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I, the Lord, am the God of your forefather Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying I will give to you and your descendants. These shall be as plentiful as the dust of the earth, and through them you shall spread out east and west, north and south. In you and your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he exclaimed, Truly the Lord is in this spot, although I did not know it. In solemn wonder he cried out, How awesome is this shrine! This is nothing else but an abode of God, and that is the gateway to heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, set it up as a memorial stone, and poured oil on top of it. He called the site Bethel, whereas the former name of the town had been Luz. Jacob then made this vow. If God remains with me to protect me on this journey I am making and to give me enough bread to eat and clothing to wear and come back safe to my father's house, the Lord shall be my God. This stone that I have set up as a memorial shall be God's abode. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 91 In you, my God, I place my trust. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. 
He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. In you, my God, I place my trust. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. My daughter has just died, but come and she will live. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 9, verse 18. While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I can be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose. The news of this spread throughout all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled, Courage, Daughter. I am going to take advantage of a rare, peaceful day in my increasingly troubled and fragmented life to make a serious examination of conscience and meditation. First I want to write a little in this journal. It will do me good, for I feel great spiritual isolation, humanly speaking, and a word of faith or of charity from human lips would warm my heart. It is God's will that I should walk the path of suffering that he has pointed out, that he has made quite rough for me lately, and yet more than ever, he is close to me and supporting me. From a human point of view, no light is visible, sadness in the present, anxiety for the future, frequent impediments in everything through my illness, the deprivation of all that could have transformed my life good and fruitful work, reading, and this because of more immediate and humble duties. Absence from the consolation that contact with people of intelligence, faith, and truly Christian love always brings. Physical discomfort, all these at present, make me dull and sad. Today in recollection and humble prayer, I will seek the divine aid I need so much, and since I believe in the communion of saints, I will ask God to apply to those I love and to others the fruits of this inaction. I must learn to use spare moments to write and work. I must not neglect my daily meditation, for that is so necessary to me, and I will do it when and how I can. To return to greater serenity, inner and outer, to struggle against absorption in my beloved's suffering, to avoid its speaking of my miseries which is harmful to inner concentration, to be harder on myself and more indulgent towards others, not to dwell upon the small assaults my feelings constantly suffer, but to offer them courageously to God, not to give in to discouragement and a type of moral indifference that results from sadness and physical problems but to keep alive spiritual joy and the determination to act. This was written by Servant of God Elizabeth Lesseur, who died in 1914 and was a French laywoman whose atheist husband, after reading her spiritual journal after her death, returned to the church and later became a Dominican priest. Laudate, Daily Bible Verse entitled, 
The Feast of St. Antony Mary Zacharia Quote, When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, Truly the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome this place is! This is nothing else but the house of God, the gateway to heaven. Unquote. Genesis 28, 16 This is also the feast of St. Antony Mary Zaccaria, who lived from 1502 to 1539. He was an Italian priest. Antony founded the clerks regular of St. Paul dedicated for the renewal of the clergy and laity. He died at the age of 36. The patriarch Jacob had a rapture-like dream in his travels in the area of Haran. He had a dream, quote, a stairway rested on the ground with its top reaching to the heavens, and God's angels were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying I will give to you and your descendants. Unquote. Genesis 28, 12 This dream changed the life of Jacob as he understood the implications for his life. He made a vow to God. If God will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, I will come back safely to my father's house. The Lord will be my God. Have you ever had a spiritual experience that changed your life? Our key scripture invites us to be open to the experience of God always and everywhere, because God is everywhere and ready to interact with us. Quote, I have asked you to trust me and to place in me alone all your hopes and all your dreams for happiness and peace. Seek me, trust me, and all the rest will be given you besides. Unquote. Insinu Jesu. Your very home may be your shrine where you encounter God. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Jesus, you are my Savior and Redeemer. I believe that you want to hear from me. I approach you in confidence and offer this prayer for those who are afraid to draw near to you. Amen. Our Petition for the Next Three Challenges Grant me, Jesus, a deeper faith in your power to heal me and my loved ones. First Challenge Awaiting Our Move We note that the official's faith moves Jesus to action. Remarkable! The Son of God accommodates a mere creature due to a show of faith. So often we see problems around us and expect God to solve them without any effort on our part. God knows our problems better than we do. Matthew 6, 8 Yet He sometimes doesn't act until He sees an act of faith on our part. The official showed such faith. It was extraordinary, after all, for him to approach Jesus in front of other people and ask point-blank for a miracle. Do I have such confidence when I approach Jesus in prayer? Is my faith strong enough to ask him for something extraordinary? Our second challenge, touching moment. The woman suffering hemorrhages had great faith in Jesus, too. In her case, she didn't express it in words. Rather, she expressed it in a deed by discreetly touching Jesus' cloak. That kind of faith speaks volumes. It helps if our words are joined with our actions. Petitions don't always suffice. We have to act, to move to leave our comfort zone in order to approach Jesus. Prayer is good. Prayer plus action gives God even more fertile ground to work with. How can I complement my prayer life? 
Can I help my pastor with a special project, for instance? Our third challenge, morning has broken. In our Lord's time, it was not uncommon to have professional mourners show up when someone died. Jesus' comment that the official's daughter was merely sleeping brought ridicule on him. Who needs mourners if the young lady is alive? We can be like professional mourners at times, resigned to the evil and death around us. We might throw up our hands and think we can hope for nothing better. We might even be tempted, like the mourners, to ignore our Lord's reassuring presence. We might think, what, me, be a saint? Or, me, call to the priesthood or consecrated life? Or, do you really expect us to handle another child right now? Luckily for us, Christ is undeterred. He comes to bring us life, to lead us out of sin, to make us more generous. In a word, He comes to call us to holiness. Do I resist such a call? Our Conversation with Christ The official and the suffering woman show an admirable faith. I want to have that same kind of faith, Lord. Sometimes I feel paralyzed by my problems, so much so that I find it hard to approach you confidently. Increase my faith and sense of hope. Let me live as if I really believe that you rule the world. Our Resolution I will offer up a sacrifice or a visit to the Blessed Sacrament or an act of charity for a special intention. Meditation Do you take your troubles to the Lord with expectant faith and confidence in His help? People in desperate or helpless circumstances were not disappointed when they sought Jesus out. What drew them to Jesus? Was it hope for a miracle or a word of comfort in their affliction? What did the elderly woman who had suffered greatly for twelve years expect Jesus to do for her? And what did a grieving father expect Jesus to do about his lost beloved daughter? Words of Hope Directed to God Jesus gave hope where there seemed to be no human cause for it because his hope was directed to God. He spoke words of hope to the woman, Take heart, daughter, to ignite the spark of faith in her. Your faith has made you well. And he also gave divine hope to a father who had just lost a beloved child. It took considerable courage and risk for the ruler of a synagogue to openly go to Jesus and to invite the scorn of his neighbors and kin. Even the hired mourners laughed at him in scorn. Their grief was devoid of any hope. Nonetheless, Jesus took the girl by the hand and delivered her from the grasp of death. In both instances, we see Jesus' personal concern for the needs of others and his readiness to heal and restore life. The Infinite Love of God In Jesus, we see the infinite love of God extending to each and every individual He gives freely and wholly of Himself to each person He meets. Do you approach the Lord with confident expectation that He will hear your request and act? Lord Jesus, you love each of us individually with a unique and personal love. Touch my life with your saving power. Heal and restore me to fullness of life. Help me to give wholly of myself in loving service to others. Further reflection entitled, Funeral Home Faith. Quote, Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has restored you to health. That very moment, the woman got well.
Matthew 9.22 The Lord wants to inspire us to greater faith through the example of the synagogue leader and the hemorrhaging woman. The synagogue leader showed great faith in Jesus. His daughter was dead, so he did not ask Jesus to heal her, but to raise her from the dead. Matthew 9.18 Before Jesus raised the girl from the dead, a woman hemorrhaging for twelve years expressed her faith in Jesus by touching the tassel of his cloak. By her faith, she was healed. Matthew 9.22 Do you believe Jesus can and does raise the dead? Not just at the end of the world, but right now. Do you believe Jesus will heal you of a malady you've had for years, even twelve years or more? Do you believe the Lord will heal immediately? Do you believe signs and wonders you did not believe last year? Are you growing in faith, breaking new ground, and moving mountains? Matthew 17, 20 Our faith in Jesus is not fully developed. We have light years of growth in faith remaining even after having already grown light years. Quote, faith, then, comes through hearing in what is heard in the word of Christ. Unquote. Romans 10.17 Welcome his word. James 1.22 Hear the Lord. Matthew 17.5 Grow in faith. Our Prayer Father, increase my faith daily. Luke 17.5 God's promise to us, In you and your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I promised you. Genesis 28.14 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ In this most of all hast thou showed me the sweetness of thy love, that when I had no being, thou didst make me, and when I was straying far from thee, thou broughtest me back again, that I might serve thee, and thou hast commanded me to love thee. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.